There's two types of landowners in Oklahoma. Those that have feral hogs and those that will. If you don't know if you have feral hogs, some easy ways to determine if you do have feral hogs are look for some of their signs such as rooting, rubbing of trees or posts, wallowing, tracks, or feces. So feral hogs tend to root in a more introduced pasture land systems such as Bermuda grass and Johnson grass. Here is a, an example of a small area where wild pigs or feral hogs have rooted. This is in a Bermuda grass pasture, which many landowners rely upon for forage for livestock or uh, as a hay meadow, for, again, for forage for livestock during the winter. You can see how the wild pigs or feral hogs have come in and rooted up this spot. We don't know for certain, but what we feel like wild pigs or feral hogs are after in areas like this that they root in Bermuda grass pastures or monocultures of Bermuda grass or Johnson grass or the, the Bermuda grass plant itself. Uh, you can see where they've, they've kind of lifted up the soil here and, and disturbed this Bermuda grass uh, pasture, creating this, this opening. And we think they're after the Bermuda grass plant parts such as this. Between my hands, this is the uh, Bermuda grass rhizome. And we think that's what the wild pigs are trying to eat. Here's an example of Bermuda grass rhizome that's been snipped off and you can see compared to where they stopped rooting here with all the soil still intact with the roots, they've knocked a lot of the soil off and, and have eaten a lot of the rhizomes uh, off of this portion of the Bermuda grass plant. Of course, no doubt they're also after grubs and other insects that occur in the soil associated with these Bermuda grass meadows. But you can see too, this is a pretty deep, you know, the soil surface is probably about right here, so it's about a six or eight inch a depression here that the wild pigs have rooted up. You get these scattered, these divots, these big giant divots scattered all over your property. It makes it extremely rough to, to run hay equipment over the over the meadow. Plus, uh, it just it, it's to drive over to check livestock or whatever else, whatever other chores that, that landowners may need to be doing as they're driving across their pastures. So that's a that's a big problem. And these these this one, like I said, is about a six inch depth but depending on the soil types and the severity of the rooting, they can, they can easily reach depths of three feet. This is a good example of wild pig rubbing. As you can see on this tree, they rubbed up against it to remove some of their external parasites. If this was a tree of high economic value, such as a pecan tree, there could be a lot of damage. Uh, wallowing is a big issue at feral hogs. They don't have any sweat glands so they have to get in the mud and the water to cool themselves down. Uh, they also wallow to remove external parasites. Well, this is a good example of an area where pigs have wallowed. It was originally a livestock feeding station. The feral hogs began rooting in the area and then rainfall collected. Once the area was muddy, the pigs started to use it as a wallow. After wallowing, the hogs go to the pole to rub off external parasites. You can see the indention on the pole where the pigs have rubbed. This area also has the potential to transmit diseases left behind by pigs. So this probably isn't a good spot to fill up your canteen. Sometimes difficult to tell the difference between a track of a wild pig and the track of a white-tailed deer. They're very similar. This track is of a white-tailed deer. You can see kind of a size scale here with the, with the pocket knife that I've laid down. The white-tailed deer track overall is kind of heart-shaped where each hoof uh, in, contacts the soil there and leaves a heart-shaped kind of a print. And that's one of the keys that you look for uh, with the, is the overall uh, shape of the track compared to a, a wild pig track. A wild pig track is more uh, square in appearance, which we'll see in just a minute. As compared to a white-tailed deer track, you can see by this feral hog track or wild pig track that it's more square in shape. It's roughly about the same length as the white-tailed deer track was, but its toes are more rounded and the, the track is overall square shaped. And so as opposed to the heart shaped and pointed uh, toes of a white-tailed deer. Another way to tell how you have feral hogs on your property is by their scat or their feces. The scat looks a lot like dog feces you know, feral hog scat typically is pretty tubular. However, depending on what they've been eating, it can uh, be more flat uh, or different colors because a lot of the plant material and animal material passes through the hog into the scat. So for instance, you can tell if they've been eating your bait pile at the trap site. 
The first step to solving your feral hog problem is to recognize the signs that they're on the property. In future videos, we'll discuss trapping and other control techniques for removing feral hog populations on your land.